So we're here with the intern and we're gonna unbox um, these brand new CD09 transmissions to show you guys uh, essentially how to cut off the bell housing properly. Get it to where it's a nice clean fit to assemble onto the A340 uh, bell housing adapter or the uh, LSX um, bell housing adapter that we have that goes onto the input shaft cover of these two transmissions. If you look, Nissan actually packages as these really well in the uh, cardboard system. They come like ready to go with the factory tripod and all the other stuff. It doesn't come loaded with the shifter already in it, but it comes with everything else. Okay, so with our kit, we have a, a new shifter system that replaces this complete tripod right here. Um, the tripod and the rear extension part um, are not needed anymore. So what we're gonna do is show you how to essentially unbolt this. There's four bolts right here. These are all uh, 12 millimeter socket. 12 mil, 12 mil, 12 mil, right there. And then right there, 12 mil. The trickiest part about this uh, piece right here is we found that the, um, you can't get this one off without taking off this anti-vibration bracket that uh, holds a, uh, a weight. Um, it's typically a weight about this big and that's to prevent vibration or oscillation. Easiest way to do this, if you don't want to take that off right away, is to bend that up with a pair of, of uh, pliers or something like that. Bend that up, get your socket in there to remove this whole tripod. Unboxing a brand new CDOA. Um, it comes fully loaded with everything pre-lubricated, as you can see, small amounts of lubricant uh, where it needs to be to make everything slide appropriately and not squeak uh, when moving. So this is the factory Nissan 350Z. Uh, bearing and carrier along with the newer fork um, and everything's kind of ready to go. Unfortunately we're not going to use any of this brand new stuff, not even the input shaft cover, all of that's kind of going going away. Uh, two different fastener types up here you see some uh, chrome type plated fasteners down here a regular black oxide fastener. These have a, a Loctite or a sealant on these to prevent the gear oil leaking out. Uh, all of these fasteners should have a uh, sealant, but uh, it's pretty clear that these are different um, with a different finish, and that's because they're immersed in, in fluid uh, the whole time. So uh, again, we're gonna cut the bell housing off of this. You can see the refined casting. Uh, they took out uh, a lot of the inner webbing and kind of went through it and made it um, a little bit refined. Bolt pattern still stays the same, but they just kind of went through and made it a little bit cleaner. When you're putting this on, you're gonna to need to chop this off right here to get into uh, the SC chassis, uh, Super chassis, and uh, S13, S14 chassis. This needs to kind of come off. The intern's gonna go ahead and show you how to uh, remove the bell housing, but the instructions say to do it just behind the second casting band. If you look here, this is a circumvental casting band right here. Uh, technically, this will give you all the clearance that you need. For a cleaner look, we're actually going to go just right in front of that casting band, maybe right on it. But it's going to be a really clean cut all the way around. I'm going to try to smooth that out and then test fit the adapter onto the input shaft cover. Um, face to kind of make sure that it sits with minimal gap right here. There's still going to be a tiny gap, but uh, just enough for clearance to get all the way around. Um, this is the sticker location of where you would initially see uh, the CDO 9. Right there, that A would be a 9. Um, this denotes the date of manufacture. So this was made in 2016, and this is essentially the part number right here. So it's a CD00A, and that's pretty much um, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to leave it to the intern, and he's going to go ahead and uh, show you guys how to cut this off safely. Don't forget to wear safety glasses. He has gloves on, and uh, make sure if you're doing this, you need to do it in an open environment. All right, just going to get the fork off. Just going to pull the bearing, spring loaded on the other side. It should just slip right off. Boot. It's got a little spring right there, if you can see. 
spring right there on the inside holds on to the pivot ball or the pin ball is what the Japanese type like to call it. It's a real tacky type of um, lubricant, but that's the pin ball. This is the short one that comes on all the CD09s and CD08s, all the newer 05 and up transmissions. The older, um, you know, 03 and 04 transmissions have a longer pivot ball. This is the shorter one. So when you get our old design kit, our uh, just face adapter that bolts onto the to the bell housing, you're going to use the shorter pivot ball with our bearing carrier that we supply with the kit. I get a lot of questions about how do I know if my transmission is a CD09, I can't read the label, the label is worn off from use and weather, whatever. Uh, if you look on the driver side, USDM driver side of the bell housing, there's going to be a CD0 and then a hashtag or a number sign and then a number right here. If this number is number zero or one, it's typically an 03 to 05. If it's a number two, it's an 09, a CD09, and that's from 06 to 07. Um, and the second part is right here on the tail housing right here. This has a CD4 number two, so this is the uh, basic, basically the newest iteration or the latest and last iteration of how they cast and made this tail housing. So um, those two things are are pretty much it, how you denote um, if it's a CD09 or not. This, is, this number is going to change, these numbers are going to change on older boxes. We have a 350Z HR transmission over here, CD0 number one, and this is off of a, an O. 7 HR transmission CD0 number 1 and again uh, CD0 number 2 so this is the proper transmission to get fortunately the camera doesn't focus really well all right so it's gonna be using an aluminum oxide cutoff wheel um, I'm gonna go right ahead and uh, follow the second casting on right in front just gonna be touching it all the way along um, uh, yeah it's gonna do some maneuvering to get all the way around, but uh, pretty simple. The cut's not deep. Um, let's see, I'll turn the screen around. The cut's not very deep. Uh, just have to go a little bit deeper when you get to some of the webbings. Uh, just to cut through it. I don't know if you can see it's kind of hard to see in there, but right right around the webbing you have to cut a little deeper. Uh, other than that, it's really not a very difficult cut. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this a little bit. Just be careful because uh, right here, uh, oil is going to leak out if you rotate it too far. So just keep that in mind. So that's as far as it'll go before it starts leaking. Does it for the cutting. Just gonna finish it off with the grinding wheel a little bit. Uh, won't focus that well, but that's the front of the bell housing. And this is what the trans should look like. Uh, cut this piece off, I mean, it looks pretty gnarly. So we'll go ahead and touch that up with the grinding wheel as well. I'll go ahead and touch this, this up first, and then we'll just hit the face. Uh, 
where I just cut off the front of the bell housing. That should be it. This looking a little better. Finished off. Uh, went ahead and just uh, hit that outside surface with the grinding wheel. I think we'll go flat. And that should do it for this one. I got one on this back side. Ready? Loosened up. Two on top. Take this bracket off real quick to get to this last one. 